Senator Langley, Representative Cornfield, and honorable members of the Education and Cultural Affairs Committee. Uh, I'm Representative Justin Chenette of House District 15, part of the beautiful city of Saco. And I stand before you today to present what really is an emergency bill, LD 1491, an act to allow trained non-medical employees in schools to administer emergency medications. In short, this bill authorizes a school district to allow non-medical employees to volunteer to be trained to provide emergency medications to students upon request by a parent or guardian. Now let me set the scene for you. I don't have to tell you that seizure emergencies can have devastating consequences for children, including brain injury, disability, and even death. There are over 13,000 people in our state that have epilepsy. Epilepsy is a neurological condition which affects the nervous system. It is also known as a seizure disorder. Here's where this ties in. The Epilepsy Foundation of New England is aware of many instances of children in Maine schools being denied access to physician-prescribed uh, life-saving medications that is used to stop their prolonged seizures. I've been working with my constituent, Christine Bennett, who has a daughter with epilepsy and at the time serves as the state director of the Epilepsy Foundation to get this bill before you today. The foundation has been an incredible partner in elevating the public discussions around this sometimes sensitive topic. The rescue medication that has caused the most questions about administering is called diastat. Because of the way it's applied to, ch to a child, clarification is needed as to whether school nurses are allowed to train others to take up the responsibility. I've heard some nurses are already doing this, already training non-medical staff members. Some feel nervous and not clear about the policy, fearing that their nursing license could be at risk if they do that. In one example, a policy was in place for a child at the middle school level, but when that child moved on to the high school, in the same school district, there was an entirely different policy when it came to emergency rescue medications. There is a need for consistency and clear understanding of what is needed across all school districts. This would only be in emergency situations, not in any way trying to undermine school nurses and the important job they do each and every day. They really are the unsung heroes in our schools. Not everyone can be blessed with a full-time nurse in their school, however. In many instances, schools have to share one part-time nurse. Some school districts are spread out geographically, so when just a few minutes can mean life or death, the need is dire to have a plan B. This is by no means a way of circumventing the need for full-time nurses. I'd be the first one to stand before you and advocate for when that the budget allows for it, but as it stands right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be feasible this session to have a full-time nurse in every school. So in the meantime, we have to come up and implement a temporary solution. Since this has gone public, I've heard from parents all across the state, some are in the audience here today, that tell me they are scared to send their children to school. They fear what might happen if a nurse isn't around or if the medication can't be dispensed in time if their child is going through an emergency. I've heard from parents whose children have been denied the same opportunities as other students like class activities and field trips simply because of their disorder. If that doesn't open up school districts to lawsuits, I don't know what would. At its core, this is about children. I've been increasingly frustrated by the lack of solutions by those in opposition, and some might be speaking today, to the proposal on the table. All I've heard is excuse after excuse for passing the buck. It's always somebody else's problem until the circle comes back around again and no one steps up to the plate. Well, it's all well and dandy until it's your child dead on the 6 o'clock news. I hope this committee really understands the gravity of this situation. This is about saving children's lives. This bill would say, in the event a child is seizing on the ground, instead of waiting around for a regulatory or job description checklist, you save the child's life. This bill simply allows a teacher to volunteer to have the training. No mandate. On top of that, it doesn't cost a dime. 
The Epilepsy Foundation has agreed to provide the training to any educator or staff member free of charge. So let's recap. Not mandating a school district, clarifies what, what school nurses are allowed to do, is free, and will save lives. Win, 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 win. This bill is now law in California and several other states, most recently in Connecticut, and has been quite successful there. Let me be clear. If there is a better solution than what is before you, I'm all ears. So far, none have come forward. It doesn't matter to me if this is the appropriate vehicle for the solution. It doesn't matter to me if the solution is simply clarifying existing laws or policies. All that matters is that we have something to tell the Bennett family, the Tinsley family, the Lamo family, the Daniel family, the Watts family, and the countless others that need answers. I think we owe them at least that much. Thank you for your time and be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Representative Chenette.